Gen Air uh, gas cooktop and we've gone through some uh, remodeling in the house. We were flooded in the Houston floods, uh, the Harvey hurricane floods. So the kitchen was remodeled, had to take a lot of appliances outside. Uh, so this cooktop was actually sitting outside. It was under a, a roof, but still was out there in, in the elements basically for the, the last couple of months. And we get it back in the house, um, get it all hooked up, uh, try to use it, and none of the valves work. I mean, they're all seized. Normally, you should be able to... Uh, I'll try to flip this over a little bit. Um, make sure it doesn't fall over. There we go. So you got... Um, let me lift up the camera. There we go. You got these five valves. None of them, except for one that I just finished working on. Um, would turn. Normally you would press it in and turn whichever direction it goes to uh, allow the gas to flow and uh, it actually initiates the electric uh, igniter uh, as well. So, but you, you know, either way, none of these would turn. Uh, they're all aluminum and apparently if you let aluminum sit outside for a while, it will naturally corrode. Um, that's what happened here. So I took it upon myself um, to get this thing, well, if not fixed, just kind of take it apart, see how it looks inside, what, uh, what I can learn from, uh, from taking it apart and, and just to uh, maybe give you some pointers on, on what, what this thing is, is all about, how it works and uh, how to fix it, if you choose to go there. So I'm going to show you how to remove one of those valves now. Um, also, as you can probably see, there's a mess of wires over here that I've disconnected. All these wires are the uh, ignition wires or igniter wires. Um, I'll show you the, the actual igniter box that's attached to the um, the cover that goes over top of this. I've disconnected everything. I've taken the picture before I disconnected it. That's probably the best way to do it, just to make sure you don't uh, mess something up later on in the reassembly. So, with that said, as you can see, each one of these valves has uh, a couple wires going into it. Um, and that's basically, that's a sensor or a switch that uh, whenever you turn, start turning the knob, it actually sends a signal to the um, uh, igniter box to make sure that the, the spark is fired off to, uh, to get the flame on. Um, so, first thing you do is just remove these wires. It's just a simple um, connector, kind of a small flat type connector. Um, this one is a little bit more difficult, but it's not. There we go, it's off. So now we have, uh, I think this is a quarter inch bolt over here. You gotta go ahead and zoom in. So I got my torque wrench. Um, let's get that off. I'm just gonna loosen it first. There we go. And then I'm gonna release this pipe over here. Make sure you go the right direction. So all these aluminum pipes are pretty flexible. You don't want to bend them too much or flex them out too much because they may snap, but there's still enough play to where you can simply, there you go, just kind of push them out of the way and remove this bulb. I'll just leave it here for now. And so this valve kind of slides into this rail this is a like a u-shape rail or j-shape rail and each one of these valves just slides in like so um, but here it is so again there we go so this thing and i'll show you what i've been experiencing so this is the knob that goes on top of it And that's what you normally would just push down and turn. But this thing is not moving at all. No matter how much force you use, I even tried to use, uh, some, just put some pliers 
on this shaft and try to uh, turn it, it just simply would not budge. Again, it's supposed to go in, go down first, and then you're supposed to be able to turn it. Uh, but none of that would be what was happening. So you can see over here, there's a lot of gunk, grease. Probably some of it is from the WD-40 that I sprayed last night. Um, but it's also a good time to take this, take this thing apart and just kind of clean it. And uh, I'll show you here in a second how to disassemble this whole thing and uh, clean it and hopefully put it back together in working condition. So here we go again. You here and just just pulls apart. May have to use some extra force, but there it goes. And it goes in only one way, as you can see. Kind of follows this uh, groove in the shaft. And there it is. I'll definitely clean that off. Still has. Uh, leftovers of WD-40 from last night um, but it goes all only one way so there's really no no way to make uh, a mistake putting it back on there you can see uh, these holes over here they're much deeper than the, the ones with the brass uh, pin in them so that's that's where the screws hide these two bolts uh, hide so I'll uh, put this to the side for now I wanted to show you exactly what the problem is. Um, yeah, you can see it's still a bunch of WD-40, but right here, let me grab something so I can point it to you. So right over here, this is where the shaft meets this little sleeve. Um, and this, there's no bearing, this is not a bushing or anything like that, it's just a aluminum um, sleeve and this is aluminum shaft and with the uh, you know naturally occurring corrosion when this thing is not used when nobody's moving the the shaft in this sleeve I mean just you know like I said it's been sitting out for a couple months it just naturally corroded and it's it's might as well have been welded together and this thing is just simply not moving um, I mean again I can push it all I want it's not going anywhere and uh, as you can see you know to turn this shaft uh, you actually have to push it in first so this little um, tongue or whatever you want to call it gets pushed down because uh, right now it's basically in a lock position uh, you won't you will not be able to turn the shaft unless this thing is out of this um, space of it this groove and to do that again you have to push this in and then there's a spring that's supposed to keep this up uh, when you push it in it releases this locking mechanism and then you can turn the shaft so let's take this thing apart uh, these are a couple bolts that you have to remove i forget what size they are uh, it's 3 16th okay here it comes apart okay so Again, here's the actual valve, and like I said, I've already taken one of these apart, um, and this thing was not, even though these two are aluminum parts as well, um, they were not seized together. Um, this thing is still moving, the actual valve part is moving. The problem is with this little shaft thing, um, this thing is seized, it's not moving. Again, I'm supposed to be able, I should be able to just push this down. Um, and move it around, twist it and turn it whichever way I want, but it's, it's just simply seized. Okay, so I had to move to the garage because I don't want to do it, do it on the floor in the kitchen. I just didn't want to take any chances with the tile floor because uh, this is what needs to happen next. Um, in this particular case, for this valve, um, I need to be able to press this shaft through this plate. This is a three-fourths uh, socket um, that I just found in my toolbox and just happens to fit perfectly right over here to where this plate this moving plate that normally moves uh, goes right inside of it um, and the uh, the square plate or rectangular plate rests on top of it so I can you know do a little bit of a elbow grease and put some hammer to it and see if I can gently tap 
the shaft down and I've done it with uh, one of the first valves that I worked on and it worked. Uh, you just have to be really gentle and patient of all, most of all. So let's see. I'll try to move. Um, there it goes. You probably heard it was a different sound like this. It's a, there it goes. It moves very slightly. And there you go. Put my glove. But again, this is aluminum shaft. You don't want to hit it too hard because it will simply uh, it will just destroy it. Um, and you want to be able to get the knob back on it. But as you can see, I was able to punch it out. And again, there's a lot of WD-40, but still, that didn't do me any good. Uh, just trying to move it by hand. And it's still... Oh, there it is. So I can now move it all the way around. So I'm gonna take it back inside. Okay, and I'm back. Um, as you can see, I've cleaned the shaft quite a bit. Um, yeah, it look, may look a little bit gnarly, but really, as long as there's no corrosion on it, um, no oxidation, and I'm gonna, you know, all those little <laughs> chunks, or all those little spaces that looks like scratches, that's gonna get filled up with uh, anti-seize compound. I'm gonna goop it up quite a bit and this is much cleaner now um, I don't know if you can see inside of it and there's there's a groove that's still kind of gnarly but uh, it, this is as much as I could clean clean it off and uh, again you know I'm gonna put some anti-seize compound in there and hopefully that'll fill up all these little spaces and not let any water get in there any moisture and, and you know the corrosion should never be a problem again. So let's put this back together. A little bit tough over here, but you can see now the world of difference. I can just freely move the shaft. Um, so again, I'm gonna put a lot of uh, anti-seize compound over here, um, especially on this part of the shaft. Let's see. Put the goop. Let it all go all over. Get it all in the nooks and crannies over here. There we go. So now I can easily move in and out, twist and turn, no problems at all. So I'm gonna go ahead and move on to uh, the actual valve. Um, let's disassemble. Let's see what's inside and how to clean clean it properly and uh, get this thing all back together. Okay, so let's get to the actual valve. Um, so right now this valve is in a closed position. So this is intake right here and it goes from the um, that J-shaped pipe that runs underneath uh, the cooktop and connects all the valves or supplies gas to all of the valves. And here's the outlet that goes to the actual burner. So again, like I said, this is in a uh, closed position and I'll show you. you may have to use pliers because this is a really snug fit. Well, this one wasn't, um, but here it is. So there's a couple, as you can see, a couple sized or different sized holes and openings that as this part or this piece is turning inside of the actual valve, it aligns with this intake uh, and basically lets the gas through the chamber and down or up, whichever way it's mounted, uh, out through this um, outlet and to the actual burner. Um, so yeah, as you can see, there's a lot of good, probably some of it is from the uh, WD-40, but I'm also, after I clean this off, I'm going to spray this with uh, some silicon spray, uh, WD-40 brand, I believe, um, just to make sure there's some kind of uh, lubricant on here, not too much. I don't think you want to grease this too much. Uh, again, this is, um, there's really no gas gaskets, no seals of any kind. It just relies on a tight fitting of these two components, uh, this bell, whatever you want to call it, in the, in the housing. And it's really tight as a snug fit. Um, 
when I first tried to move it I wasn't able to move it with my fingers I had to use the needle nose pliers but yeah so this is you know it's very important that this surface both surfaces are really clean there's no debris no sand uh, no shaving metal shaving anything like that so I'll go ahead and clean this up and be right back okay we assembly time so I just want to show you this uh, this part of the valve um, as you remember it was pretty gnarly when I took it apart so again I cleaned it off with some compressed air and then I sprayed it with some silicone uh, lubricant um, and uh, then I sprayed it with air again just to get rid of the excess uh, lubricant again it's pretty you know it's nice and shiny you don't want too much lubricant uh, to uh, basically get in the way um, and all of these both of these parts are clean did the same thing to this guy clean it inside sprayed it with uh, lubricant and uh, got rid of it. again this is the default position of the valve in it's turned off that's out um, so let's go ahead and reassemble this bad boy so there's a spring that goes on top and again here it's really hard to mess this up um, there's a notch on the uh, on this part of the shaft as you can see right there and that lines up directly or the tongue lines up directly with this notch over here so let's get back in there and it's also as you can see it's now the shaft is locked um, that's the position you want to have it in when you're reassembling it simply press this make sure that the tongue is inside the spring like so let's get these screw holes lined up I'm not going to tighten it just yet. I want to make sure that this is this side is lined up. There we go. There we go. Now we can tighten it. So there it is. And now, as you can see, I can easily press the shaft in, and I can turn it. There we go, come on. First time takes a little bit more. There we go. It's much easier when there's a, you got some grip or actually put the knob back on this. There we go. So you can see the full action in and turn all the way again in so again this seems a little bit stiff but the more times I do it the easier it gets and I was not able to do any of this before I took this thing apart so um and of course let's not forget you know, Move the excess. Um, anti seize compound, and again, this is the uh, the switch that turns on the igniter. So you want to make sure you put it back in place before you reassemble the whole thing. Uh, and it goes on one way, as you can see, there's there's deeper holes without the brass um, pins in them. That's got a that goes over these bolts right over here so and again just there's a notch over here give it a nice little push there it is it snaps in place all right guys i uh, just wanted to show you the um the igniter box um and this is actually the bottom half of the cooktop uh there's the cooktop over there and uh 
all these wires are actually color labeled um, black, blue, red and so on but I don't think it really matters since whenever it doesn't matter which knob you turn all the igniters go off at the same time so but for uh, I guess my sake I'll just reconnect everything uh, the way it was I took a picture just to make sure I have everything uh, reconnected correctly but uh, so all of your uh, igniter wires are plugged in on this side and here is a like a black connector um, and that's the uh, sensing wires from the switches or from the knobs that initiate the uh, the firing uh, sequence to uh, send high voltage uh, to the igniter leads and create spark as you can see it's, it's a mess but i've already tried to clean it i'm not going to spend too much time on this uh, one thing i wanted to uh point out uh, when I was taking this thing apart originally I I thought I was gonna take this regular off but um, it just yeah it didn't look too good to me and I just I, I figured it's gonna be more work so once I propped pried this cover open a little bit I was able to see this supply line uh, that goes to uh, this J rail over here and it was much, much easier to simply undo this compression um, fitting over here um, and basically free the bottom half from the top. Um, so if you run into similar design, I'll definitely try to pry the cover open first, see, kind of take a peek of what's inside, um, as opposed to taking this regulator off, because that may run, in, you may run into major problems trying to get it open and then put it back on without having uh, leaks. Uh, so I'll go ahead and start putting this back together and uh, we'll see you soon. Okay, the cover is about to go back on. Just wanted to let you know, like I mentioned before, I took pictures of everything beforehand so I knew uh, I would know exactly how to reconnect everything and it, it definitely comes in handy so you may want to do the same um, pretty much in every situation that I'm getting into where I don't know exactly how things are put together I take pictures for uh, documentation uh, one thing that I wanted to show you is um, last night because actually it's been 24 hours um, whenever I was reassembling all these valves I was using this uh, ultra black silicone uh, gasket maker and uh, there it is and it hardens as you can see right here I used it on this valve and I used it on the bolt on this side I use this gasket maker on, on every single one of these valves reattaching it to this J bar um, obviously there's gas flowing through this this bar and you don't want to have any leaks uh, coming from underneath the actual from the inside of, of the cooktop uh, so it's very imperative that you get a good um, gasket sealant, some kind of a silicone, and this this is actually a high temperature silicone based um, compound, so it's it's definitely a good for this purpose here. All right, so we're looking at the fully assembled or reassembled cooktop. Um, now I say that with a sigh, as I'm gonna to uh, most likely take it apart again for some reason. I guess I think. Upon reassembling, the the wire came off of the um, igniter switch. This white block over here. Uh, it's simply when I turn the knob, there's no ignition. Um, every other knob gets the igniter going. And as you can see, it's uh, all five burners. Fire up, and as you saw, one of the burners would not initiate um, the igniter. And come to find out, well, I thought there was a wireless, maybe, or maybe one of the wires came loose from this switch. This is the igniter switch that I mean, the shot of the knob goes through here. Whenever you turn it, um, it basically shorts out the circuit and sends a signal to uh, igniter to produce the spark. Um, so I figured out, uh, you know, this thing didn't work. I tested it with my multimeter. I figured I'd take it apart to see what's going on. And I can, see, you can see there's, you know, some corrosion on these brass rivets here. So what I did to open this thing, there's only two rivets holding together. I, I kind of drilled them out a little bit, 
and then I just punched him through uh, with a little nail over here and uh, this is what it looks like inside it's pretty simple design as you can see it just a couple wires half a millimeter from each other and basically whenever this uh, shaft turns uh, there's only one place where it does not touch or does not push this long wire um, against the little wire over here the shorter one you see that's how it works so this is a normal open um, position of the switch and when it start turning the, the, the knob it basically uh, the circle on the knob pushes this thing closed but as you can see there's a lot of a lot of corrosion on this thing um, so what I'm gonna do is take these uh, they look like copper wires out and just you know give them a nice little scrub with uh, some fine grit uh, sandpaper and then spray them with some uh, electrodialytic um, grease to prevent any further corrosion um, and hopefully we can get them working again okay just to prove that everything is working let's try them all in the row there we go that's number one I'm gonna go all the way around. See the adjustment still works. It's fine. Number two. Number three.